What's up, everyone? This is Andrew with the Apex Files and Race Comp Engineering. Today, we're going to be talking about coilover springs. So be sure to like this video, subscribe for more tech tips, and check out our podcast on the channel as well. Okay, so this is a coilover for a Subaru WRX. And one of the advantages of coilovers is that most of them use standardized coilover springs, which means you can switch them out for other stiffer or softer springs pretty easily. When you're looking at a coilover spring like this Swift spring, You've got the actual spring rate, the inner diameter, and the length. Now with coilovers like these, we're usually looking at any, a linear spring. So the rate is something like 280 pounds per inch or five kilograms per millimeter. It doesn't get stiffer with how much you compress it. The inner diameter is just that. It's this inner diameter of the wind here. And that really determines what kind of coilovers the spring will physically fit on. Most coilover spring perches are made for either 60 millimeter or 2.5 inch ID springs. For length, that's pretty straightforward too. These are 200 millimeter long KW race springs. The key is to have a long enough spring so that it doesn't fully compress or block up before the full compression travel of the damper is used up. That's called coil bind and can feel really harsh since the spring is just well a block at that point. But a longer spring of course is heavier and can make it difficult to get the ride height that you're looking for. So if you're replacing your main springs, you gotta know if your dampers can support the new spring rate and they have the right inner diameter and the right length. It's always helpful to talk to your coilover manufacturer for support. Most of the time, a coilover can handle a window of plus or minus two kilograms per millimeter, or about 100 pounds per inch. Some coilovers have a bigger range that they can adjust to, to handle, um, but either way, you should check with your manufacturer. Also, some coilovers use a helper or tender spring, which are these little guys here. And so a helper spring is a soft spring that's just there to make sure that the main spring stays seated when the damper is fully extended. So you can actually use all the droop travel that you have. That's important. I personally would never run a setup where the main spring gets loose when the suspension is extended. A tender spring is mostly the same thing. You can have a little bit more spring rate to actually affect the dynamics of the car a little bit too. This is a factory spring for a Subaru WRX. You'll notice that it looks a bit different. It's bigger, kind of has a shape to it. It's definitely not standardized. You couldn't throw this on any old car and you can't put, easily put a standardized coilover spring on the factory dampers either. You'll see that the wind here is spaced differently at the bottom versus the top. So that means it's a little bit progressive as opposed to the standardized springs, which are linear. Um, some coilover springs are progressive. Uh, one of the advantages of a linear spring like this that's straight, uh, you do get a little bit more tire clearance as well, which can be important on cars like a Subaru BRZ or WRX where a uh, strut can impact the, the, the tire. Thanks for watching. This has been Andrew with the Apex Files. Be sure to like and subscribe for more tech tips. See ya.